Hey everybody, welcome back to Reboot Leggers. This is a comedy podcast where we create illegal underground reboots against the man's wishes. I'm Scott Owen. I'm Frank Serra. Welcome to the... Do we have a name for our speakeasy? It's a speakeasy, right? See, I, I, I guess I always thought like we're in Reboot Leggers, but it's not... You know what I mean? It doesn't really work. Like, we are. Reboot Leggers is our job. Yeah, no, that kind of makes sense, though. Welcome to Reboot Leggers. We're welcoming yeah. it into the building, I guess. The re- the reboot state, the re, the boot, the boot station, the... The, the boot station. What rhymes, like with, boot station. what rhymes with boot? Anything? Shoot. Reboot shoot. Toot. Loot. Uh-huh. Is there a... Toot is nothing. Toot's... Too so much. The re- what, a, what about like zoot suit suit? Oh, you got your reboot suit on here at the. Because I, I I'm wearing shoot. mine. The Wait, reboot. You wearing, you're wearing yours, right? Well, yeah, always. Anyway, we got a hot one in today, Frank. Coming right at us from Tommy the intern. Uh, did some good intel for us. Brought us the top most anticipated reboot in history. Probably not. Almost though. Almost. I mean, he took he took it off of a guy's desk. He's just like, hey, I found this. But he's handed it to me. And what we're working on today is a reboot of the 1989 classic television series, The Golden Girls. Golden Girls, the story of four single women uh, above the middle years. Yes, above the middle years. Correct. And their adventures in agedness. Yeah. Pretty, that's pretty accurate. We've got uh, specifically single women, specifically three widows and a divorcee. So you scandalous. Know, yeah, in the eighties, this uh, that mattered. Yeah, this is very progressive. You know, you've got four women who all decide to live together after their husbands die and or divorce them. I'm going to put a pin in that. In the actual original show, really quickly, they don't all die at the same time, right? I don't think so. Now we'll we'll come back to that we'll come back to that later. Yes, we will. Okay, I see what's happening. Okay, so um, the show stars Dorothy, Rose, Blanche, and Sophia. Dorothy, Rose, and Blanche are three best friends. Sophia is Dorothy's mother. Dorothy is the like she's the sarcastic main ish mm-hmm. character. Betty White is sorry. B. Arthur plays Dorothy. Betty White plays Rose, and she's kind of the like. She's kind of, like, dumb. She's not dumb. She just, like, doesn't get stuff. She's, like, the... Mm-hmm. You know, every show's every, got a dumb like, character. Er, like, all all Disney kid shows, right, is, like, the main character, the smart friend, the dumb friend, and the wild card. Exactly. So, uh, Rue McClanahan plays Blanche, and she's... Well, I don't know. If she, she's not the wild card. She's, like, the one who has all the sex. Because okay. she's, like, the youngest of them, even though they're all, like, the same age. But she's the one who's always talking about, like sleeping around with dudes and stuff not sleeping around like uh-huh. but she's always going on dates because they're stuff. all 60 like it's not yeah she, it's, happening she, live right she's just the one who you know she's she's the hot one i guess there's always a hot mm-hmm. one and then uh estelle getty as dorothy's mother sophia she's the wild card she's she's supposed to be like mm-hmm. 80 something maybe 70 i don't know how old she's supposed to be she's supposed to be dorothy's mom so however old that would make her but she's the one who's like she's old enough she doesn't care about what anyone thinks she's very very sarcastic. She's going to do her own thing. Yes, she she has a gun. Maybe we're not, we're getting we're getting ahead of ourselves. We are getting ahead of ourselves. But so the show is basically just kind of a sitcom, your standard sitcom life of these four women as they just do sitcom things. So it's a lot of relationship stuff, a lot of um, relationship stuff. It's basically relationship stuff. I think they might get jobs. Okay. I mean, they do need they need to make a living somehow, and they they have like kids and stuff too. Right? They do have kids who sometimes appear on the show, and their kids will have their their you know grown children because they're all mm-hmm. old. Uh, so their grown children will come in for some arcs and stuff like that. Um, Dorothy is the one who has been divorced, and she has two kids. Betty White's character Rose is she's the. She's listed as a Norwegian-American from the small farming town of Olaf, Minnesota. And a lot of her thing is just how she... She always has, like, weird stories about her weird hometown. Like, 
Oh. It's weird stuff. And then at some point... Like, we all skied backwards eating loot fist. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. Um, And so then she, for a small part of season six, goes into witness protection, presumably because Betty White couldn't film for a while, and the writers decided that was the be- easiest way to explain her away. Hmm. We will come back to that later we as well. We definitely will. Blanche is Southern, uh, so... Uh, and Blanche is the Blanche is the one who's 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 man hungry. Yeah, yeah. The most she has the most sex times over the series. And then uh, Estelle Getty, Sophia Petrillo, Petrillo, Petrillo. She is from Sicily, and she like I remember this actually. I've seen well, this show. old world wisdom. She's always talking about back home in Sicily, what it was like. She was she fled to New York to get away from an arranged marriage and met uh, a guy named Salvador and uh, married him. And then her husband died. And then she moves in with her daughter and her friends. With the gals. And they all, they all literally live together. Yeah. Right? Her retirement home catches fire, which is why she moves Ooh. in with her, with her daughter and her friends. Man. Yeah. Um, so. All right. So, and these girls are, uh, golden they are golden girls now that's a play on the isn't like being old called your golden years or your something? golden years when did the yeah. golden years start um apparently they start at 55 because that's what the that that's that's what rose the youngest is is listed as the age of oh hot damn francis there's a spinoff show called golden palace now are they all rich in the golden palace oh my gosh i didn't even realize it so it it's it's so dorothy leaves so now it's her mom Rose and Blanche invest in a Miami hotel that is up for sale. Oh boy, this is I can't believe I didn't know this. This is ripe. Um so their ju- the, the hotel is revealed to have been stripped of all its personnel in order to appear more profitable, leaving only two employees, the hotel's manager and the hotel's chef. This is the original Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Yeah, so it's these three women like running this hotel and then it focuses on the interactions of the guests and these three golden girls jeez uh starring the three those three golden girls betty white rue mcclanahan estelle getty one don Cheadle. oh young don Cheadle. young don Cheadle and cheech marin wow of cheech and chong okay okay we can we can combine these yes I think. so this has now become just a golden reboot a golden universe reboot yeah we're re- production yes yeah oh my gosh yeah, okay are, are, are we ready to dive in i think we got enough background i think so too uh let's yeah we're gonna wait there's another spinoff there's another spinoff frank called empty nest empty empty nest i think only has like one of the characters right yeah, it's not any of the Golden Girls. It's I guess some of the it's the, the same. Characters. It's the same acting world. It's the same acting world. Yeah, it stars. Mm. I think we'll stick to the Golden. Yeah, the show, okay. the ones yes. that feature the Golden Girls. I agree because we're we're here for these Golden Girls. I'm here for the right? Golden Girls. I just found out, and I was just my mind was getting blown by all these spinoffs of Golden Girls. Oh my gosh! And then there's a show called Nurses, which is a spinoff of Empty Nest, which is a spinoff of Golden Girls. This just goes deep. All right, we're focusing on Golden Girls and the Golden Palace. I don't even. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to. But, so, let's get into it. We're going to jump into our first segment called Love It or Leave It. Love me or leave me or let me be lonely. This is the part of the show where we talk about what things we're going to keep and what we're going to get rid of from the original stuff. So, obviously, we're going to keep the Golden Girls. The gals themselves. The gals, correct. Now... One thing I want to make sure up front we keep, we're keeping the age. Yes, they are golden. They're they're in their golden years, and they are the golden girls. Mm-hmm. Now, I do think we need to make it, we need to, I think we need to punch up a couple things. Mm-hmm. We, I'm not getting a lot of, like, you know, like, blood rush excitement out of these scenarios. Yeah, so... I think we need to amp up the adrenaline just a little bit more. Okay, so we're just keeping the characters, but not necessarily their setting. Sure, yeah, I mean, it's just not... It's just not doing it. No, I agree. We need to keep our audiences engaged. Yeah, most of the show is them in the kitchen talking to each other. Yeah, that's not gonna fly. 
uh yeah that's not very exciting now like, we can have we can have location. a wrap-up scene at the end where they talk to each other about you know what the lesson they learned yes no problem yeah i think i mean these days it's more popular i feel like shows that are set at a location that isn't just at home so you've got mm -hmm. the office superstore um especially with green screen these days mm -hmm. these gals these they can go anywhere they can go anywhere. They can go to space. They can go underwater. They can be in a palace. Yes. Um, I want to... So I want to keep most things about them. Like, mm -hmm. they can... Oh, yeah. So they're still all... Randy Rose. Sinning Dorothy. I flipped... I already got them wrong. What did you say about Rose? Randy Blanche. <laughs> Blanche is the sex one. Randy Blanche. <laughs> Sinning Dorothy, because she, she did a divorce yes crazy Ooh. sophia i like the wild card aspect i really like absolutely the... sophia is crazy and then um and then goofy rose is goofy just rose. The, rose is rose is pretty much the straight man of the group it seems like now rose is the dummy of the original group oh really she's like really naive like she okay. she's every sitcom's got like the kind of dumb guy yeah yeah um but so an innocent innocent rose yes i want to keep rose's weird origins like it doesn't necessarily have to be the same origins but i want to yeah, keep yeah. rose being like she she's... has like she has like ancient secrets from home mm -hmm. i do like that and it gives us an excuse to inject exposition at key moments too yes where R rose like nobody knows nobody knows the name of every principality in russia but rose just lists them all yeah <laughs> She then everyone's like, "How do you know that?" She's like, "You guys didn't take Russian politics." Yeah, you guys didn't take Russian history one hundred and one in elementary school. Cause yeah, I did. You guys didn't. <laughs> okay. Oh man, like she took. And it's always a class in elementary school. That's yes. her stick. Well, it's okay. I I want to put a pin in that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I want to keep. I guess I think it's good if they've got you know grown up kids. Yeah, yeah. And I want to try one of the things the show was very. Um. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Appl lauded. Yeah, f w it was. Did you say applauded or lauded? E both of them work. Either way, it was the thing that got them that critical acclaim was its uh, progressiveness. So it mm -hmm. featured. So this is you know the show came out in '89 and it's early '90s still. It featured a lot of gay characters. It featured cross-dressing characters. It featured people with AIDS. Like this was still during a time when it was a big deal. So it was golden girls was like, not only was it progressive because up to this point, there'd never been a show that was ex like specifically starring older women, like as the main featured characters. But then it also was just like, yeah, if we're just, if we're going to do it, let's go for it. And like push, everyone's envelopes so they did that so i want to keep that if we can and uh For sure yeah as you know we're gonna do our best as two milk toast white guys but i think we can honor the spirit what else do you like what don't you like let's see i think we want to keep the origin story right all four of the husbands die one gets divorced all f all four of the husbands die <laughs> And then the and then the girls are pushed into their current situation, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. I think I want to dramatize it a little bit. And when I say all four husbands die, I mean like at once. Okay. So I this... want kind of a driving impetus for some like really just kicking off action the second episode one starts. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's a good uh, transition point for us to move into our next segment called When and Where. <laughs> This is part of the show where we establish the setting and genre of, and just like the rules of the world that these characters exist in. So it sounds like we already have the same idea here, but we want an action series. Oh, big time. Because here's the thing. The aged and especially aged women are massively underrepresented in the action market. Mm. You've got your beefy rocks. That's true. Dwayne the Rock Johnson being the only rock. Um... You've got your, you've even got your, your, your Ed Harris, your... Yeah, we have a lot of uh, old action men, 
and not yeah, enough yeah. old action women. You know, you've got Liam Neeson. We even have young action women. You've got your Charlize Theron. Yes, but we don't have any old action women. Old action women is, you know, missing. Missing. This is an easy, easy market to fill. So I'm thinking, you know, we basically do Golden Girls, Charlie's Angels, but better than what I just said. Yeah, okay. Like a Like better than the, what I just said though. The the fast and the old. Yeah, like it's like Tokyo Drift. So what I was envisioning, I want to do like The Expendable Incomes. Kind of like the Expendables or the movie Red, where it's four I want it to be about four previously like very mm-hmm. good This isn't an origin story. No, this is not an origin story. So the setting that I'm imagining is these four women previously were each, either they were a team together or they were just like, oh, can we get the, we've got to get, I, I think I know what you're going with this, right? So basically they, they, each of them was like an elite agent. One was like, one was a great spy 20 years ago. I think they one were was, all great spies 20 One was years the ago. best assassin 30 years ago. Yes, they all did James Bond stuff. Now, whether or not yeah. they were each like, they were all part of an original team when they were younger or if they're all just like friendly and know each other but they all oh. are part of different organizations yes um, i think if if this so we we briefly talked about uh rose being yes. having a lot of russian education yes this is what i, I really to talk want about. the i really want i really want dorothy blanche and sophia they were american spies rose was a russian spy but now they're all old and on the same team yes i was actually going to go a step further where rose is actually from some like crazy like russian communist mm-hmm. like sleeper village basically oh like the americans yes like the americans except the other way around where the other way around except yeah, she... she's she's part of like it's it's like mm-hmm. communist russians formed a town in yeah. America. So she's are, still from Minnesota, but she's from she's from New Moscow, Minnesota. Yeah, but it's also it's it's a different name than that because I think the Russians are trying to hide the fact that they've got a whole village of sleepers. Okay, so it's like Orsk or it's like it's, it's Minsk, Minnesota. Yeah, that's fine. That's perfect. Okay, then Blanche is she's I guess if, so she's the Randy Manhunter, right? So mm-hmm. we're talking like I think she's the social engineer of the group. She knows how to get like people spy to do work what she and wants. espionage. Yeah. Okay. And then so in so I'm thinking these four retired agents are now all living together and basically come out mm-hmm. of retirement and for some reason and we can decide that based on what happens in the pilot, but it sounds like all four of their husbands are going to die very Husbands are, yeah. Now Sophia is still going to be Dorothy's mom, the wild card. So her husband was like, so, okay. So then we got like two generations. Like we've got Sophia kind of raised Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Dorothy's always been in it. Uh, And then, I mean, maybe, maybe her dad and has been dead for a while. Maybe it's just like the three young, yeah, yeah. Cause it's like, it it, it would be, yeah. Husband and dad killed at the same time is is a little, that's a lot. That's a lot a lot um and then i'm thinking we take the setting from golden palace and basically the three the four of them are living together under the like the premise the the facade if you will of owning this hotel that they're running but really yes, it's like a, a lot of a, a lot of cash changes hands a lot of people are moving in and out like informants to get the information yes so the hotel is just a front for their espionage work because they yeah. are operating outside the government and so do we want to so we let, let's let's talk a little bit more about the world yes so is it going to be 2018 or is this going to be a throwback and the ussr is still around mm. Mm, that's actually interesting it could I do like so if it, if we can do it well I like mm-hmm. the aspect of making it a show set in the 80s. Yeah. But I also like future technology things that oh, get man. put in present day shows. I would love to watch old women use like like you cell phones right because that's a big thing that was missing in the original golden girls now that said it could still be set in the 80s and they just have very advanced spy technology that is like cell phones but it's like so it's very advanced in the 80s but it's like it's like the original motorola razor 
Yeah, which is still like inconspicuous yeah. and stuff. It's not they're not using eighties. You know, chunk I think cell phones. actually every we could save a lot of money. Every single piece of technology is a Motorola razor that they just like wave around. Okay. You know, like like that would save us so much money. You can get a razor for like a dollar. It would save us a lot, but also like they're what if they have guns? Are they just gonna be shooting razors? Well, at people? maybe it can be phasers. But they'll just be holding a razor to shoot. Well, yeah, well, we can... it'll be like it'll be like two razors duct tape uh, like at opposite ends, so it looks like a thing. Yeah. Okay. Or like if they need a like a mini spy camera, crack that razor in half and only hold the top part with the camera. Now it's a tiny little spy camera. Now here's the thing we could do. Also, what if we could take a page? Some might call it. It doesn't matter what some might call it. We could adopt a thing that i like from the tv show archer where archers like it's clearly set in a more present day but it's also like could be in the past based on like some of their technology is very advanced but then they're using like room-sized computers and Mm -hmm. um and stuff like that but then they have the internet it's kind of uh like the 60s never went out of style but it's sort of modern yeah exactly like They're definitely in the present, but... Like, it's all tube TVs. Yes, it's, like, tube TVs, except sometimes it's not. Or, like, their computers are the size of rooms. They've got um, regular cell phones, but then they've got, like, old-looking cars, stuff like that. Um, So we could do it like that, where it's just, like, not clear what time period it's in. Some real anachronistic theming. Yes, yes. I'm into that. And I I like that the aged... our, Our aged main cast wouldn't notice yeah another show that did this really well is uh legion oh legion did it really well legion is genuinely good television legion is genuinely good i mean archer also is so is archer legion is and both on fx weird welcome to fx boys (laughs) yeah legion it yeah legion does it super well where it is you cannot tell if they're in the 60s or present day like is it Mm -hmm. just the 60s and they have really crazy technology because they're a secret government organization or is it the modern, modern day, day and they're, they're all just dressed, dressed weird. weird yeah exactly yeah. so that's what i want we can do that so i think what i think our last key piece is the antagonist force and i didn't i, I didn't say villain specifically because i don't know if we want a single villain character yeah i don't know that we necessarily well i mean i think we you got to have recurring villains if we're gonna do mm-hmm. big plots like so i i feel like you know we'll do the standard formula which is most episodes are you know one-off conflict of the week but then there will be an overarching story that sometimes they connect to and we move forward Mm -hmm. um so maybe the antagonist is like a rival spy organization i mean i feel like here's the i don't want them to be part of like a big organization i want it to be no, basically just the i four want them of to them. operate as like a cell yes so maybe it's like the four of them and then the the antagonist is like i don't know anyone who's so an I'm enemy of say freedom a sentence, and, I'm, and i'm not going to speak after it until you respond to me because i need your honest opinion i want to say something really quick okay go ahead baby spies You you want baby spies to be the bad guys? Does it work? Whoa, okay. This just gave me an idea. So I do want to caution you because we did do another reboot. You might you may recall our Animorphs reboot, which was specifically old people versus young people. We did already do that. You that got, said, okay, that listeners, said, you can go ahead and hit up that Animorphs episode, but we're gonna change the gig. That said, you can say we may not be original, but we never repeat ourselves. Correct. Now, Frank, what if this also now takes place in the Spy Kids universe, and the Spy Kids are the bad guys? You know we could lock Danny Trejo in a second. Oh yeah, you know we could get that Uncle Machete. It's Machete. Yeah, he called it. It's I've heard it both ways. He, uh, yeah, we could get him. I think we could get. You know those two kids aren't doing anything. You know they're not. So that it's it's they've aged up a little bit, right? They're not tweens anymore, but they're well, like in their twenties so, and they're super arrogant. So what happened? So after the first Spy Kids movie, they like basically Spy Kids becomes its own like whole organization in like within whatever spy agency that is, and it's just, like a ton of children agents. So what if like 
they have like they they have like rulers. The, the women have rulers, and they need to just spank these children into. In, in, yeah. In, so are they going to be good. like killing kids? I think that they're, I know I, I I like it better if they turn the turn their hearts. Hmm. If they if they if they they foil the scheme and discipline the child, and the child then respects them. Yeah. Okay. What because if you don't do that? What if the antagonist is their former agency that has now been like compromised, and they are like gone rogue? Okay. I like it. What what are, what what are they trying to do? I think they're just trying to you know defend the country from any bad. Th- they're basically just doing you know everything James Bond does, where they're just every mission, every week there's a new mission where it's like this guy's trying to steal drugs to bring in bombs into the into the horse. But so then tracks. this this agency is like we'll just nuke them all, and then the and then the Golden Girls have to like save them. What about this actually? What if they're just now they're like basically just like freelance mercenaries and then much like the expendables much like the expendables but then they get like they're i'm again i'm going back to the archer well but they're just like a freelance espionage agency who just takes on contracts that's, they've got missions and then they they kind of build up a rapport of like like this person like ruined our last mission and yes. like, now they're kind of yes. a sub antagonist so they'll have like rivals and then th- most yeah. of the time they're just doing it for the money but then every oh once in a while gosh. they get pulled into the something golden bigger. girls agency yeah they call it the Golden Girls Agency, yeah, that makes sense. That checks out. And they, oh, their cover is like, you call them, you call them, and you ask for a nanny because you have a naughty child. Okay, so the Golden like Palace super nanny. So the, and then they come to the meeting. So they're not running a, they're not pretending to run a hotel anymore. They're pretending to run like a a maid nanny service, or like a daycare. No, I think the hotel still works. But I, I like we, your I think nanny. Keep the hotel. Yeah, we could, uh, you know, it, it works. Okay, we we should jump into our next segment called Who Can It Be? Who can it be now? And this is where we nail down characters, which, you know, we've already got the four girls, but we'll, we got more. And then we also got to, we got to cast them based on these mm-hmm. things, based on who they are. So I'm thinking, so here's, here's the unfortunate reality of this situation is three out of the four Golden Girls actors are deceased. Oh. Now, Betty White is eternal. I think okay. maybe we get Betty White as Sophia. I was going to say the same thing. It's been 30 years. She is the age to play an aged woman's mother. She is the age to play it, and she and has established... And I think established... she's got just the raw grit. Exactly. She has established a comfort and familiarity with being the mm-hmm. wild card in- I have. This is gonna sound like a joke because we're doing a comedy podcast. I, me, Frank, I genuinely believe in real life that if you hand Betty White a grenade, she would throw it. Well, yeah, she's gonna throw it. Okay, I'm going to hit a list, and mm-hmm. I'm looking at. So I, I'm gonna. I've got a few names that I can throw out there. I'm looking for actors over fifty. Mm-hmm. Since this is the Golden Girls revival, the Golden Girls has a truly incredible amount of clout. Mm-hmm. I'm going to throw out Meryl Streep. Y- okay. That would be big. She hasn't done TV, has she? I don't, th- I, I don't think she's done television. I would like to nominate Angela Bassett. Oh, that's good. And we know, you know she's an old pro. You know she's an old pro. Dis- well, they're all going to be, they're all going to be old pros. Despite, they? they are. What about CCH Pounder? That's a- The Shield? That's a person? Mm-hmm. She's the animated DC voice of Amanda Waller in every appearance. You'll recognize her. Yeah, you, I immediately recognize her. Over. She's from, isn't she in some sci-fi original series? Mm-hmm. I think she, she's, I think she's in like The Shield or something. Isn't it? Too. Warehouse 13, is that what she's in? Her name does not sound real. She was um, I, the Shield was her big thing, the FX show, but that, and that was also sci-fi. Are we? Uh, I guess. <sighs> See, well, so so one of these people is Betty White's daughter. Oh, big time! Dorothy. Dorothy is Sophia's daughter, so maybe that's Meryl Streep. Meryl that's Streep Meryl is Dorothy. Streep, I think, I think yeah. that checks. I think that follows. So then, and then you want to do? So do we want? So out out of so 
I like Angela Bassett for Randy Blanche because she is the youngest looking of this group so far. Mm-hmm. She she held it together. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she could be Randy Blanche. <laughs> is she going to be called that on the show? I think. I think that Betty White. I think that Sophia the, is going to say like same old Randy Blanche, but yeah. then like they're not going to. She doesn't like it. Sure. Okay. Um. What about? So we need. So we've got. We need Rose. Mm-hmm. What about? Salma Hayek or ooh Emma Thompson, oh. she could be British. We could get um, oh boy, we could get Maggie Smith, maybe. Maggie Smith's old, old though. She is. I mean, she is a treasure. Don't get me wrong. I love Maggie Smith. She's as old as Betty White, isn't she? Yeah, she probably is. Maggie Smith is. She's eighty three, so she's ten years younger than Betty White. You know what? I'm, I'm going to throw something out there. I've been watching a lot of The West Wing. Uh-huh. And I haven't seen Stockard Channing in a long time. Okay. And I think she could play this. She she played Sirius very well in The West Wing. Okay. Well, now Rose is the dumb one. I mean, Rose she's not dumb. Rose is the dumb Rose one. is very, co- like, capable. Rose but is the innocent one. Rose is the one who was raised in a Russian sleeper village we established. So we need someone who can play that well. Who can play Russian sleeper? Now we could go with Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver could, or we could, we could go with, it doesn't have to be Russian, I guess. It could just be communist. So what if it was like Cubans and then we get uh, a Latino woman for, cause she'd fit well. I, I, yes, yes. I'm into this. I'm into this. And in this universe, Cuba is on par with Russia as like a capable superpower. Yeah. Yeah. This is our world to mold. As we please. Okay. Okay, so... Penelope Cruz would work. Jessica Alba. Rosario Dawson. Ava Mendez. These are all women in their I 40s. I actually... I think we should get a skilled actress mm-hmm. in the chair, two layers of wrinkles, and a wig. You wanted to be... So, I want to cast for skill for the rose slot. You want to cast? Okay, so you want to age, like, cast someone and then age them up about 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I want to reverse Robert Downey Jr. them. Oh, from Iron Man 3 when he got made young. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That's maybe not the, the most fresh reference. I mean, let's just say Salma Hayek because we said her already and. We did say her already. She's great. Plus, she has experience working with Machete. She does, and we are going to have Mechete. All right, so now that we've finally gotten casting for the four girls, uh, mm-hmm. let's... A grueling process. Let's talk other characters. Mm-hmm. Now, we have the two hotel employees. Yes. What were their names? Their names were, I will find them, Roland Wilson and Chuy Castillos. Boy, we might have to change that name. Our boy Don Cheadle was Roland Wilson. And Cheech Mar- Marin was Chuy Castillos. So we had kind of both were comedians, but we had one who ch- had, we had one who kind of played the straight man in the duo there with Don Cheadle. Was Don Cheadle a comedian? I I think I, he can be funny in movies, but I don't think he he's, can I don't be think funny. He's a that's fair. He's not exactly a com- he's not a, he's not he's not a comedian. Yeah, like I don't think like Chris Pratt is hilarious. Chris Pratt is not a comedian. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. But. I mean, but... we could just get Don Cheadle again. I think he'd come back. I think we could get Don Cheadle and we'd give him, you know, now instead of being now. OK, OK. So in the original show, he's the hotel manager. Mm-hmm. I think now he so either he is still the hotel manager, but his real job is basically like assignments like he. Yeah, like, well, like I don't. I want to be clear that the girls run themselves, yes. but he is info and support. He's the man in the chair. Yes, the man in the chair. To quote Spider-Man. Do- I think he'd come back for that. I think he'd do now, it. Now, hit me with the second man's name. Chewy Castillos. Chewy. Ch- C-H-U-Y. Ch- Chewy. Chewy. Chewy? Chewy. Cheech, Cheech Marin. He was the... Um, That's going to be tougher to pull. Now, this lists him as the other co-chef, but... Um, I don't know who the other one is, so, you know, he'll be a chef, I guess. I mean, he doesn't have to be a chef, but mm-hmm. who do we get as Chewy Castillos? 
Is it, oh, that's Machete. Obviously, we already said Machete's going to be in it. Oh, it's Jane, yeah, Jane. Machete. We, we <laughs> okay. Um, and then Trey's Danny Trejo. Just yeah, Danny Danny clear. Trejo. Mm-hmm. And you know he, he he fakes he fakes Chef good. He fakes Chef good. He comes he comes out with the grease the grease stained apron. He goes, I got everyone's grilled cheeses. Yes. But he says it in the in the machete way. Yeah, every every he's like kind of grumbly about it. Mm-hmm. Everyone's grilled. I can't. I'm not even gonna try. I got everyone's. I got everyone's grilled cheeses. If you can, be, <laughs> you can be picky with your cable. You can be picky with it's, your grilled cheese. I got. Hold on one second. I gotta watch a quick video of machete talking. You want some grilled cheese? No, that was bad. Uh, meh, meh. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. Here we go. Machete kills official trailer. One second. It's on YouTube. You know, he's in a lot of commercials right now, too. What other... I'm going to need to hit... I'm going to need to hit you with some uh, recurring characters from the original... You're good. <laughs> you good Jesus already. <laughs> That's about all I got. This is a solid Danny Trejo. This is a solid Danny Trejo. Mahete. Mahete. Machete. It's incredible how much of this trailer Danny Trejo is not speaking in. Yeah, uh, he doesn't talk a lot. Um, let's move on from Danny Trejo so that we could talk about which recurring characters we necessarily care to keep. Like we, we mm-hmm, talked mm-hmm. about grown children. Do the grown children know that they're? I want to play out a bit of a farcical sitcom element where the children think that they're like doddering old women and they have to pretend when the kids are around. Okay, perfect. So... And you get funny things like the, like the son opens the cabinet and then like a knife falls off of the ceiling and they need to like huh, and like slap it away and then like get, they like get it behind yes. their back when yes. the kid turns around and perfect like that i want to get billy eichner as dorothy's gay son now i i know who that is but for people that that might not billy eichner's a name now he is what's he's the angry guy in the later seasons of parks and rec what is his name greg i think his name is greg or craig oh it's craig. the he yells a lot yeah he parks yells a lot rec. he has a show know, called billy on the street is. where he just also just kind of shouts at people and it's usually really funny he's he's wonderful he's very funny i think we get him i think we get and he he's one of the sons who yeah we'll make him a son who i mean who do you want in who can we who would you like to see in a show such as this oh man so i think that since the child parts are going to be played for a little bit more comedy we kind of stretch into that Mm. You already brought Billy Eichner, that classic NBC vein, right? Yeah, okay. I want a Z's. Okay. You just want to get Parks and Rec, the cast, to come in You know, I was thinking about it, and I really just, I pretty much do. Okay. God, I would love to have Rob Lowe as one of, like, 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 my son's a lawyer, and then it's Rob Lowe. Yeah, or... Reprising his role as the grinder. The grinder. Okay, and then do we want to cast a recurring villain, or is it going to be a season to season basis? I think it's going to be season to season, and I want, I want, I think I want the season arc villains to be as old as they are. Yeah, that checks out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we can get like Patrick Stewart, Edward James Almost, Edward James Almost, Patrick Stewart, Thomas Hanks. If he would ever do silver screen, this is the time. Um, now, he pretty much only does silver screen because silver screen is movies. If he would ever do the copper screen, now is the time. <laughs> there you go. Bronze, even. I think that's it. that'll do it for... That's good for casting and characters. We, we've, we've really, really nailed it down. We fleshed it down good. We're going to jump into our final segment. What's going on? This is where we really get into the meat of the plot and establish, you know, how what they're all doing. So obviously as a TV show, this isn't going to we're not going to plot out. We're piloting. We're piloting and, you know, kind of general plot as it goes. So pilot, all husbands die at the beginning. Mm-hmm. So we've got Dorothy and Sophia They're they're Dorothy is visiting her mother, Sophia, mm-hmm. in the nursing home. And she says, like. Ever since dad died, I know it's been lonely, but I'm glad that we have good, good time for me to hang out. I don't know. I don't know what daughters say to their mothers. I'm, I'm in neither of those categories. Yeah. Ever, um, it's been hard, but at least we have how's each the, other. How's your herbal tea? I don't how's know. the elbow? And then Dorothy gets a call and the call is from, is from Blanche. And Blanche says, you need to get out. You need to get out now. Like it's a oh, and they right. use like yeah, because in because in the original show, in the well in the original show too, 
Sophia comes to live with them because her retirement home burns down, remember? Mm-hmm. So... And Blanche says, you need to get out now. This is a, this is a code... This is a code 22, which is a spy word they used to use. Yes. Okay, so here's what I'm... here. Okay. So I'm thinking maybe one of the four girls is not retired at this point. And she gets in deep. She's compromised. Whoever, like she is working against basically (gasps) finds out about her and goes after all of her loved ones. So they, they try to kill the other three girls and all their husbands to get to her. Yeah. And she says like, I'm sorry. I pulled you into this. Like I've been, I've been, I've been in deep cover. Yeah. They're all like, but she's an old, I'm sorry. I pulled you into this. I've been in deep cover. Yeah. But she's either, you know, Angela Bassett, Salma Hayek, or Meryl Streep. So it sounds nothing like that. I'm sorry I pulled you into this, dolls. I've been in deep cover. That's that's very good. That's a very good Meryl Streep. No, I think maybe it's got to be Rose or Blanche who didn't retire. Mm -hmm. I think it's got to be Blanche because Rose is a little bit more innocent. Yeah, so Angela Bassett. So Randy Blanche couldn't stay out of the game. Randy Blanche, Angela Bassett couldn't stay out of the game. So yeah, they, she calls them and says, you need to get out. Then the retirement community explodes. They get them out. And then you find out that like all of their all of them were hit at the same time. Their husbands have died. Yes, simultaneous. Oh, man. And then uh, like, like, so Sophia like slaps out the walker. She doesn't have a walker because it's an action show. They get up and they, and they hustle. They hustle and they go across the street and then the building just collapses in on itself and big explosions now sophia may actually have a walker and i so i want the walker to be a spy gadget it like holds the gadgets and then she like she like twists the one handle and pulls and it's an automatic weapon yeah she can like reconfigure it to be like different Mm -hmm. things and it becomes like it becomes like a street scooter yes or sometimes it's like yeah, sometimes it's and, like, like a crazy, like wheels. sometimes it's crazy like stun baton. Yeah, it's very yeah, versatile. Yeah, real, real, real men in black shit is going to happen. Yes, it's going to be very cool. So then they all like regroup in a safe house. Blanche <sighs> explains what's going on. The abandoned on. GG Palace Hotel. Okay, yes. And that's where they all meet. They meet there and then they decide this is our this is where we have to stay for the time being until it cools down. Blanche explains. Okay, so yeah, this is our pilot villain. Blanche explains like I got, I made a mistake. I got compromised. They found out about all of you and they went after And they got the ones. data dump file. Yeah. So then the pilot is basically them going after the, the first two episodes. It'll be a two part pilot, obviously. Yeah, oh, big time. And they'll go after that organization to get revenge. Mm-hmm. And the organization is the killer, in, indecent. Mm hmm democratic mm-hmm. socialist the kids i see otherwise what you're doing. known as kids okay the indecent democratic socialist now i don't know if that will play well with a millennial audience as democratic socialism is a rising popular movement in politics yeah maybe we okay we'll change it it'll be the it'll be the killer in, in, man this killer i is killing me. i mean what was i before i said indecent indecent yeah we can keep it indecent we just can't be democratic killer, socialists killer indecent demon so worshipers killer indecent dong scrubbers dong scrubbers dings killer indecent dumb democracy slappers because they hate <laughs> democracy democracy shirkers shirkers shitters no, they can't Demo- be shit in democracy. Democracy. Well, because they're anti-democracy. Slappers. Not yeah, government. they're slapping it. Democracy slappers. Sure. They also just disrespect it. They're not using a closed hand. Maybe we don't have to. Maybe we, yeah, they're just the kids. They're just the kids. And we talk about the acronym, me and you, but maybe mm-hmm. later. And we, it. yeah. Um, okay, so then they so they go on a revenge mission. They assemble a very small team to help them, and then they're like, "Hey, we're a really good team. We should keep doing this." Mm-hmm. Um, because you know the people who want to hurt people are still out there. We need to defend America or something. I don't know. Oh, big time! They basically establish. They're like, we we've been. So, okay, we do show snippets of their lives post-retirement, right? Up to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're peaceful. and But they're they're also unfulfilled. 
they're bored. And so then this mission makes them all realize, like, we want to get back in the game. And then they open the Golden Girls Oh, agency. you know, they're, they're just going to get some Dorothy's going to say, like, I feel 50 again. Yeah. Doll. I think she is 50. I don't know how old they are. They're golden. That's They're golden. Yeah, she'll just say like I feel and they, twenty you know, like, years like, younger. Like one claps a man on the head with like a with like a two by four and says like, "How's that for a golden oldie?" Yeah, and they'll say like, we "Get some good lines." My hip's not the only one that's gonna hurt in the morning. Mm-hmm. My steel hip can beat your bone hip, and then just like <laughs> clocks them. It's a good thing I one person they punches him in the mouth, and she says, "Take your medicine." One guy like tries to kidnap them, and he says. You're going to have to let your families know you're going to miss dinner. And then they say, bitch, we ate dinner at 4.30. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm already I'm already rocked and socked and ready to, ready to hit the hay. <laughs> yeah, and then they shoot him. <laughs> and then they shoot him, and then they shoot him. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of very good jokes about old people. They'll be, you know, eating beets mm-hmm. and stuff. Oh, man, one of them is going to take out their dentures. Again. And then, like, slide the dentures down. Now, the, one of the realities of the world we live in now is that people age a lot more gracefully than they used to. So, what, you know, 50... It's all the preservatives. Yeah. So, you know, we'll age them up. It'll be <laughs> it'll be great. Now, here's, another, here's one thing I do want to touch on as a long-term plot element. Now, you may recall in the original show, Frank, mm-hmm. it features three widows and a divorcee. It does. It does. And we have established that all four husbands are dead. One of natural dead. causes, three assassinated. Mm-hmm. What if instead Dorothy. we reveal season two, maybe three, mm-hmm. Blanche's husband is not dead. Oh! He has, he has defected and he is... They turned him! He is who uh, gave up the Golden Girls that caused the everything in the pilot. It, has he been de-aged via science? Oh, he's a young boy now. Maybe not young, but like 40. Mm. Like they worked a miracle and they took off 20 years. Who are you thinking? Who are you thinking? Who's, who, who are you thinking about this for? Like a, uh, like, a, uh, like a serious, a man who is tortured but has made his choice. Mm-hmm. Who can pull that off? Mm-hmm. Hmm. I can't think of a single man actor right now. I don't want Liam Neeson or Bruce Willis. I don't. No, no, no. We want we, we, we want to skew a little bit less obvious, I think, with this one. Maybe. You know what? Hmm. How, how about, I think, I think we, I think this might work. Let's, let's say that the aging process is actually a lot more than we thought it was. And he's just a baby. And how do you feel about, how do you feel about that- Chris Pine? Okay. Yeah. I think he deserves a chance to play like a serious dramatic role. Okay, yeah, I'd love to give him that chance. Get him on the TV. Mm-hmm. Sure, you know that would be great. Okay, so then, so that'll be like you know a recurring plot where they find out about him, and then yeah, he's yeah. got the golden boys, maybe. Oh, he's got the golden boys. His entourage. And the girls fight the boys. All of legal age. We're not doing anything weird. No, no, no. I mean, it's the same way. And the golden girls are all grown up. It's, it's the same. It's the same way. Yeah, it's the same way. Okay. That's, uh, what else do, is there any, like, how much more plot? Oh, oh and then in one episode, one of them finds out that their son has joined the Golden Boys, but he doesn't realize that he it's a spy agency. He doesn't realize it's a spy agency. That's very yeah. good. Okay. And then in another episode, um, one of their kids learns about, um, stealing. Oh, and they gotta be like, <coughs> and that is wrong. So wrong. And, um... You know, we will do at least one bottle episode. Mm-hmm. Will there be a beach episode? I think I think it's only fair. We can't not do it just because they're women. We'll do it. We'll do an on location. You know how a lot of sitcoms will do like we're filming in England because we all went mm-hmm. to England. So we can do one of those where most of it most Venice Beach most of it will be pro- filmed and produced in Toronto and it'll will pretend like they're in a lot of different locations but then one time we'll actually go to a different we'll location go there. and they'll team up with other spy agencies sometimes there'll be romance there'll be comedy there'll be tragedy what network are you thinking for this now that we're not tied down cuz we are doing mm-hmm. this illegally we're, we're free from the iron chains of the NBCCW. The NBCW no longer holds sway over us given that they did ask us to, you know, 
against mm-hmm. our we're, we're, they asked us to come with them out of the building to come and stop working for and them. then they ran back in and locked the door really fast yeah so now that you know we don't we don't need them who do so we- this show this show has a combination of it's got some light comedic moments but it's ultimately an action series now there is a place where action lives on television and that is tnt it's TNT. They're, ta- they're, they're, it's action lives here is the motto. Yeah. Is that true? Maybe. What about... So you you want to go... Do you want to go cable? Do we want to go premium? I think at the very oh. least it's cable. Well, so that's the question. Do we go... Let's establish this first. Is this the very first original series brought to you by Cinemax? Um, no. Maybe. I was... So here's what I want to... Let's just hammer this out first. Do we want network cable, premium cable, or streaming? Is this, you know, an Amazon Prime, Hulu, Netflix show, or is it a okay Thursday night primetime on NBC? Is this the first live action show ever hosted on Crunchyroll? Okay. Interesting. That is very popular. Maybe, yeah, okay. Maybe we get it on VRV, or is it Verve? How do you say it? Ver- I, I, I've, I've heard it as Verve. Okay, maybe we try Verve? Mm-hmm. Crunchyroll could be interesting. Verve owns Crunchyroll, though, right? I or think Crunchy Ver- Roll- Verve owns Crunchyroll. Or maybe it's the other way around. Either way, they are affiliated, so... Yeah, we could get it on there. I want I want to seamlessly transition from the newest episode of Golden Girls to the newest episode of Dragon Ball Z Super. Perfect. Yes, I think, and I think those are sh- th- these shows will complement each other very well. Mm-hmm. Back-to-back-to-back viewings. Yeah, and, you know, maybe down the road we'll talk about crossover opportunity, but only after we've at least gotten five seasons under our yeah. belt. Yeah. Um, I would love to see the Golden Girls fight Frieza. Oh, man, and have Goku come in and, like... And help. Bah! <laughs> I'm I'm the all right. I think we're going. I think we're going off the rails. But I think we got a good product. I think we got a great product, and I think that's going to do it for us. Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed our reboot of the Golden Girls, and which may or may not also be a Spy Kids reboot. If you liked the show, please give us a good rating and review on iTunes. That would help us out a whole lot. We would really, really appreciate it. And if you know anybody who you think might like the show, please. Uh, share it with your friends spread the word help us get out there Uh, until next time I'm Scott Owen I'm Frank Sarah and Frank what is the password for next week the password for next week is oh my hip oh my hip